Jessica says, my company using Microsoft Teams primarily for the chat app. It's getting difficult to separate the chats based on which client we are discussing and the crosstalk is overwhelming. I would like to move us over to using the Teams app. Would love uh, feedback on the best way to set this up. Um, create a separate team for each client, create one team for clients and add a channel for each client. Also, is there a way, if that's some indication, Jessica, that we all shook our heads, no. <laughs> also, is there a way to bump up the notifications? When a new team chat is made, the only alert we get is a little red dot on the activity app, but not on the Teams app, which is weird. How can we make Teams app notifications better? It's kind we of are all chomping at the bit right now. Joy, you know, joy joy. So many things. Yeah, who needs to work together? What are they working on? And how are they getting that work done? The team is who needs to work together. The channels are what are they working on? And the tabs across the top are what tools are they going to use to get that work done? And I, I can see the reason for having clients and then having a channel for each if there's not a lot of activity or if they're potential clients and eventually they grow up and become their own team. But you know, who needs to work together because they will desensitize to all of that banter and shut it down like they do email, right? Yeah. Um, because yeah. everybody's ignoring their email now. You don't want that to happen. Let people focus on what they need to focus on. I, so I mean, I, like a lot of us, I went right out when, when Teams was brand new and I was consulting independently. I went and created, again, just for me internally, I had one client team created a channel for each one. And then I had, I, so I had like five or six clients and then one said, well, I'd really like to be able to collaborate with you around all these things and realized, well, I can't invite you to this because then you would see every other client. Yeah. So that, so the way that we do it now today, and I'd love to hear from all of you, but is that we have different teams for each client. Absolutely. Um, also, if you try to pigeonhole everything into the same team, that means everything you're doing for that one client that only gets one channel, you're going to have to do nested folders in that files tab. And the deeper that nested folder gets, the worse your search results are going to be, the slower your indexing is, the slower your load time is. It's just mm -hmm. a bad experience. If you want to talk to, if I wanted to talk to Sharon, about the migration of Sherry's content, I'm doing that again, it's like chat in one pane where we're also talking about helping Sherry with her power pages and all the other things. You can't organize your content, your conversation if you're cramming it all into the same thing. So yeah. concur one team per client. And yes, mm -hmm. Sharon, I had my hand up, but it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my the client too small. I didn't see it. Sorry about that. Well, because the channels are, you know, what are the topics around that client? Are you talking about financials? Are you do you have a, a different right. channel per project that you're working on? So then yep. as certain projects are finished and other ones light up, you can you can hide the channels that you're not working in anymore. But if you have one projects channel, then like you're saying, now they're all mushed together and you can't focus in on what's important. Yep. Uh, yeah. And for you, so you if you, I understand the desire to have a single customer or client team, it's just it's compartmentalized, and it really makes that left navigation pane clean. But where sure. it falls over is you can only have so many channels in a team, so you could theoretically run out. It, it was two hundred and fifty at one point. I I know it's I think changing. it's up to like a thousand now. Yeah, it's Yo, moving up to why? a thousand. Why? Okay, so then you can only, <laughs> even if there's a thousand, when that rolls out, you still can only show a certain amount of channels. So all of those channels that could be shown in a team now are hidden. And now the people will have to manage their own channels to show what are hidden and, and what show by default, which means you're going to run the risk of missing notifications. Well, that's that's mm -hmm. not good because not everyone's going to know to like at, met, at mention you to make sure that bubbles up. So you get into all of these areas of limitations now. And so one team per unit of work or business identity, whatever, makes the most yeah. sense. Yes, your left navigation gets overwhelming, but 
you will not necessarily be involved in every project, or maybe you have customers that you're no longer responsible for. Inside of Teams, you have the the hide show option. You didn't remove yourself from the team. You didn't delete the team. You just said like, I'm getting rid of the static because yep. Teams can be overwhelming, like very overwhelming with content and notifications. So if it's really important and I've hidden the team and they said, Norm, we need you at mention, boom, it goes up to the activity icon, whatever that thing's called in Teams. And so now I know that the stuff that's important to me that I need to action is in that activity. So I don't have to do this top down, left mm -hmm. to right view of everything that's happening in Teams. I go after the priority items. So it's about limitations. It's also, that's also why for for those uh, those organizations, <laughs> Microsoft, <laughs> who use Teams for all the community pages, it doesn't work on people like me because, you, like Dorm, just you point out, if I'm never at mentioned, I will <clears throat> never go dig through all of those archives of all those channels of all of those threads and conversations. It's just lost. Yeah, you know, of all this great information that's out there, and why like Viva Engage is a better platform for doing that kind of thing. But anyway, um, but yeah, there, there's a, I was just gonna, um, something that Joy and I can both talk about is the, you know, the importance of going and again, pre-provisioning, like setting up the templates for it. You might have a template for a team site for a customer or for a partner that they're structured the same. So mm -hmm. while you have the freedom to go and add on to that and extend it and do the things which are unique to each of those customers or each of those partners, if there's a standard way, so we know every every team that is partner related or customer related has um, you know a project management channel has a you know has the calendar of course has certain tabs has certain third party mm -hmm. tools. Maybe all of them have a unified access if you have like a project management organization that's like a centralized forms repository you can which you can link to within each one of those as part of the, the that that provisioning template. So there are ways that you can streamline the the creation of those teams, but it does come back to having those you know mm -hmm. those teams. And as you implement that consistency within the teams, you start to reinforce <clears throat> the consistency in which the business works. You then start to build these efficiencies for the people doing the work. And I don't know if anyone said it, just maybe because we're taking it for granted, but uh, for the user who posed the question, Jessica, uh, make sure that that chat moves over to a channel conversation. So when you're yes. talking about the context of a customer or a client, it happens in their respective space. So it has the context. It doesn't get lost in the, you know, that those long running histories. So yep. chat comes to a channel conversation and you will save your users so much frustration Amen. by doing that. Preach. That should be like Ian. a slogan for on a <laughs> sticker is um, don't chat, comma, channel. Yes, yeah, get on that. Oh, you're, that the yeah. you're the sticker king. You're the sticker king. But so then by doing like, that on. too, you're making sure that everyone that's on the team working with that client is in the loop for the conversations going on that they need to know about. And Jessica, yep. too, to answer your questions about the activity, if you at mention the channel, that pop up on the desktop or whatever will have the channel name and give context the notification. A badge will go on the team. If you at mention the whole team, right, the whole, you'll see that the team, the comment was made in the team. It won't have like the topic specific there, but the badge will go to the team if you use your at mentions. Yeah. You can also and control activity. your own, each person can also control their own notifications on each channel, yeah. boost them yeah. themselves so that they get yeah. emails or banners or whatever for that activity yeah. too. But th there is kind of a, a, a there's a, a smart way to create content at mention people at mention the teams use uh, uh, channels uh, hashtags use channels for the conversations mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. uh, subjects in the conversations things. yep yes, add subjects yep <laughs> oh now now and, we're just getting crazy and if you're going right to be with MLA standards if you're going to be busting out 
like single channels into one team where you know you're going to be creating multiple teams. You need to be creating multiple teams. Naming conventions matter. Mm -hmm. And I'll just leave that there. Hashtag Mike governance. <laughs> <laughs> <Mike> <laughs>